All right, Shalom. I want to start off first by giving all praises to yeah, the Heavenly Father and to His Son, Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh, that's the name of who today many would call God, or they would even say Lord. But we know His name in the Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Bahashem is how you say in the name of Yahweh Shah. That's the true name of who today many would commonly refer to as Christ, or they would even say um, Jesus. But we know his name in the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, it's Yahweh Shai, you know. So we do give all praises unto the Father and to the Son. And I want to say Shalom, which means peace, unto the 12 tribes of Israel who are today, uh, you so called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? You are the true Israelites of the Holy Scriptures. And I want to also say much respect to the men who teach the word in truth and sincerity, breaking down the scriptures for the elected nation of Israel. Now, what I want to touch on today, or, or really what I'll call this um, this sitting or this lesson, um, is Esau is Cain in the regeneration. Okay, Esau pretty much is Cain coming back on the earth. Okay, is what that means. So, you know, that, that's that's today what I want to go through and kind of prove, you see? And, and really, you want to look deeper into it. Cain is the same spirit as the serpent in the garden, you know? As you read about the, the um, you know, the, really the first three chapters of Genesis. Well, the serpent that was talking to Eve, and, the, and that, that was the most deceitful beast among all the beasts of the field, you're going to figure out that was not a literal serpent. That was actually talking about a man. Okay, but it, the books of Genesis, the first three, specifically are very parabolic. Um, and not to be really taken literally, but I'm not really touching on the serpent today. Okay, I'm not touching on that. I'm touching on Cain and Esau. How those two are the same spirits, but but even the serpent is, is the same spirit as Cain and Esau. So these three are the same spirit. And this goes into um, regeneration, all right? You got the same spirit coming on the earth, but the different bodies okay different vessels that's all your body is is a vessel but your spirit will be the same nonetheless now uh, what i want to start with is genesis the fourth chapter and i'll read and adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man of from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a was a keeper of the sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the first of the fir of the ground of an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and his offering, uh, he had not respect. And Cain was very rough and his countenance fell. So right here you have. You know, the heavenly father, he had respect unto Abel and to his offering because Abel did what the Lord said to do. OK, the Lord was requiring the first of the flocks. Right. And, and the Lord respected Abel, but did not respect Cain. And Cain got all upset. And the Lord said in verse six, and the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou do as well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So, you no, know, the heavenly father is like, look, if you were to just, you were to just do what I had commanded you to do, you would be accepted, okay? But Cain, in his disobedience and in his evil spirit, okay, which was in him from the beginning, he did not want. He was a hateful forsaker of the Lord, man. So he did not. He, he did not want to do what the Lord said, and, and then he got the audacity to go get pissed off at the Most High. Because the Most High is not accepting him, you see? And the Most High is like, if you do well, I'll accept you, you know? If, you, if you're if you obedient, I'll accept you. But if, if you're not obedient, look, sin is at the door, you know? And you can go serve that, you know? And sin, and that was talking about the Lord saying, you can go serve Satan or you can serve me, you see? Pretty much you can go you can go to Satan and you can go to that way of death, okay? You you can go serve that, that, diso, that uh, the spirit of disobedience or... You know what I'm saying? You can you can uh be be obedient, you know what I'm saying, and you'll be accepted. You see, and what did Cain do? We're gonna figure out eight. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they, they were in the field, Cain rose up 
against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So what did Cain choose? He chose the way of Satan. So what he did was he killed his brother, which is sin. You know, that's why he says sin laughed at the door. So what did Cain do? You know, he, he was like, forget the most high. He said, I'm going to actually go serve you. I'm going to go uh, and do what I want to do, pretty much, is what Cain was doing. Showing you that he's that disobedient spirit in him, you know. And again, you're gonna find, you're gonna figure out even Abel, Abel is actually Jacob, in the region. Uh, Jacob is Abel in the regeneration, and Cain was Esau in the regeneration. These two brothers, okay, are supposed to represent Jacob and Esau. You see, and this shows you how, you know, the same, the same, the same spirit is in these Edomites today, and that was in Esau, the actual man back then. How he just hated his brother. Okay, Jacob Esau hated Jacob. You know what I'm saying? Cain hated Abel. And even to this day, these Edomites hate the Israelites. You see, this is the same spirits, though. That's the that's the point. You understand? Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why is that where is thy brother? And he said, I know not. And I, I am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood at thy hand, from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass. That every one that findeth me shall slay me. And Yahweh said unto the, uh, unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And I'm gonna stop reading right there. But pretty much, this is um this is all accounts of what the Lord did to Cain. He cursed Cain. Cain was cursed. With, with a multitude of curses, you see? But really, you're going to find out Cain, in his lifetime, he just ended up going to the land of Nod, like we read. He dwelt there. He had wives. He had a, son, or he had a wife. He had sons. His sons grew up. They pretty much became successful in their craft or whatever. Okay? And, and that's pretty much where Cain's story stops. But... You know, where is it that we can actually see Cain, you know, becoming a fugitive and a vagabond? When do we see Cain receiving this mark or, you know, or being cursed from the earth? You see, where, when was it that we see Cain wandering from a place to place without a home? You know, and if you ask me, it doesn't seem like Cain at all became a vagabond or became a fugitive in the earth. OK, nor did he receive that mark. And you got to highlight that mark okay you, you're gonna find out that he didn't pay for he, he didn't actually take on those curses in his lifetime or he didn't really pay for his sins in his lifetime now now you gotta ask yourself why is that you see first and foremost before we uh, keep going on I want to show you why Cain didn't actually have to go through all that right then and there you see and this is uh, this is how the Heavenly Father judges Exodus 34 and 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. So Yahweh says he will by no means clear the guilty. So Cain's not getting away, you know what I'm saying? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generation. So what you're going to figure out right here is that the Lord... He curses the children because of what the fathers have done. You see, even though the actual father himself might not actually um, take on that, that curse or he might not get chastised or it might seem like he got away with his sin. And I say seem like seemingly with quotations because no, they don't. OK, but they're going to come back on the earth and in their next life. OK, pretty much you're going to pay for your sins then. OK, and this goes into what you call the law of regeneration, your spirits being regenerated upon the earth, but in a new vessel or in a new body. You see, and this is how the heavenly father judges. 
Now, let me let me get this right quick. Right. And I'm going to get these few two scriptures and then we're going to get back into uh, and we're going to prove on how Esau or, or Cain is Esau. Esau's Cain coming on the earth. Right. This is Ecclesiastes 11 and 28. It reads to say, and judge none blessed before death for a man shall be known in his children. So pretty much the Lord says, don't judge anybody blessed before they die, because you're going to know if they uh like who they you're going to know who they were when they uh in in their children. So just because someone's living blessed or they might seem OK, like they're not getting judged for, you know, for being wicked, because you have a lot of people who seemingly seemingly i say get away with wickedness in the earth right you see they get a rape they get away with rape they get a, they get away with robbing murdering right and they somehow live some type of peaceful peaceful life you see or they just seem like they just did not get judged okay in their life without them actually having to repent and it's not because they got away with it it's actually because they're going to be paying for it when they come on earth okay and that's why it says, judge none blessed before death, for a man shall be known in his children. Because you're probably going to come back as one of your great, great, great grandchildren, you know. And I can even go up to say, you know, great, 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 great grandchildren. Because if you go back to Exodus, it says, uh, he, he lays the iniquity upon the children's children's children to the third and fourth generation. You see, so that that's the same case with Cain. Okay. And that's exactly why Esau, you know, Esau, when he came on earth, he came out of Rebecca's womb with no melanin. OK, if you actually look into the word Esau in Hebrew, it goes back to Aishashwaf. OK, meaning to be wasted or, or wasted away is he. And when Isaac named it, when Isaac named Esau, it was because when he saw him, he had no melanin or he had no pigmentation. It was it was wasted. OK, meaning he, he did not have. Okay, uh, uh, color within his within his skin. Okay, and why did God make Esau this way, man? Why did God kind of cur? Why did God? Why does it seem like God cursed Esau? Because you're gonna find out Cain is Esau coming back on the earth. Okay, and and uh, the heavenly Father promised Cain that he would set a mark upon him that anybody seeing him would immediately identify him and slay him. Right, and that's why these people don't have or, or Esau came out. Red without melanin, okay. His skin show forth, or his blood show forth through his skin. And, and you also got to ask yourself, why does God hate Esau? Okay, as a matter of fact, before Esau and Jacob came out of their mother's womb, it was it was stated that God already hated Esau before he came out, right? Let me actually get that real quick, right? You got to ask yourself these questions, right? And it, you got to get more understanding upon these scriptures so that you can really realize that regeneration is a thing too. Uh, Romans chapter nine. And I want to get 11 for the children being not yet born. And this is talking about Esau and Jacob. Neither having done anything good or evil that the purpose of God, according to the election might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. Okay. It was said to the elder. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger as it is written. Jacob have I love, but Esau, have I hated? So these children, man, they were not even born and they have not done anything good or evil. All right. They, they didn't even get to prove whether they were loyal or, or disobedient. But the Heavenly Father says it was already it was already prophesied. It was already a four time um, known that, you know, Esau was going to serve Jacob. OK, prophecy of the kingdom of heaven. But then also it says that he loved Jacob and he also hated Esau before they came out the womb. Right. And, and, and why is this, man? OK, because Esau is Cain. OK, and Cain was that wicked, rebellious spirit. Right. And let's let's get another scripture. Right. Let's get another scripture to kind of prove this, that that Cain is, um, you know, Esau, you know, Isaiah 34. OK, Isaiah 34. And I want to get five. Right. It says for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Upon the people of my curse to judgment. So the Lord right here is prophesying that when he sends his son or Isaiah is prophesying that when the Lord sends his son, Yahweh Shai or who the world calls Christ, that he's coming down with the sword and he's going to come down upon Idumia. Now, Idumia, that's Edom in the Greek. 
Okay, that's how you say Edom in the Greek. And it says, upon the people of my curse. Why is it? Why are these people the curse of, cursed of God? Okay, you're gonna find out that nowhere any nowhere in the scriptures are you gonna find where God curses or or puts a curse upon Esau or even the Edomites, man. But you're gonna figure out the reason why these Edomites are cursed in this in this scripture and just in general, and why they're hated. Okay, is because of the curse of Cain. You see, let me get this right quick. Cyrac, okay. This is going to be the book of Sirach, chapter 41, okay, and, and 8. It reads to say, Woe be unto you, ungodly men, which have forsaken the law of the Most High God. For if you increase, it shall be to your destruction. And if you be born, you shall be born to a curse. If you die, a curse shall be your portion. So that's the, um, that's the case with Esau. He was born into a curse. So that's, that is the point, okay? Okay, this curse is the curse of Cain. You see, let me go. Let, let's prove that again. Let's go straight back to Genesis 4 and 11. And it's going to tell you. And now art thou a curse. This is now God talking to Cain from the earth. Now thou art cursed from the earth, which I open her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. You see? So guess what, man? These Edomites ate a curse, man, with no melon is. All right? Because he stands out amongst all people upon the earth, as you can obviously tell. And it goes back to verse 11. Okay, it says, and now thou curse from the earth. And what does this mean? Okay, because the earth, we all come from the earth. We all have ele elements, okay, or you would say uh, um, minerals that are found in the earth are also found within your body. Okay, like you have calcium, iron, zinc, iodine, magnesium, selenium, so on and so forth, right? Our bodies are composed of those same minerals, okay, and nutrients from the ground okay or 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 the dirt okay and, and what color is dirt okay dirt if you if you dig into the ground dirt is like different shades of brown okay you get dark dark soil you can get lighter soil and you know you the, the higher you go in the soil it is is lighter but the deeper you go is darker but the fact is um you know it's it's of color though it, it has okay a brown color to it so by nature you're supposed to have color or, or melanin inside in your skin. OK, and the only people on Earth who do not have that melanin. And I'm saying by nature, because all nations of the Earth have melanin, like w even the Chinese. If you look at the OK, the, the ancient pictures, OK, of the ancients, OK, like the Aborigines and things like that, these people all had color. OK, but the only people on Earth who do not have that pigmentation or, or melanin by nature is Edomites. OK, because the Edomites today be, are the Caucasian race. All right. And it says that they would be cursed from the Earth. And that's why they are deficient. That's why they lack. OK, that's why they have um, blonde hair. OK, they have blue eyes, no pigmentation in their uh, in their skin. OK, their hair instead of standing up. It, it, or in, you know, instead of standing up and being lively, like wooly texture, their hair is stringy. It falls to the ground. It's like dead because why they're cursed from the earth and they lack the nutrients from the earth. And as a matter of fact, according to the law in Leviticus, when, whenever somebody begins to lose their melanin or even lose their pigmentation in their skin, that's called leprosy. OK, and that is a curse according to the law. And these Edomites, they got leprosy. Okay, read read the law of Leviticus, man. Specifically, start the 13th chapter, the 12th verse, and the 13th verse. It tells you leprosy was when someone would lose their pigmentation. Okay, they might get like white, white blotches, okay, on their skin. Today, you might call it like vitiligo, or even if your whole body is like, is, is so-called pale. And that's called albino, I believe, yeah. So, hey, man, that's that's actually the plague of leprosy today. And these Edomites, they are lepers by nature. All right. But they're clean lepers nonetheless, pursuant to the 13th chapter of Leviticus 13. OK. And, and, and going back to the curses. Right. If we go back to the curses. OK. Verse 12. This is the next curse that um, we can identify who today this fits. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Okay? And I want to deal with um this fugitive and vagabond. Because if you 
look up the definition of fugitive. Okay, it's, it, really, it really means a person who is trying to escape, you know, from a place and, or they're, they're kind of like trying to hide because they're trying to avoid arrest or they're trying to avoid persecution. And if you look up the definition for vagabond, uh, it, it means like a person who wanders from place to place without an actual home. Okay, so when Cain pretty much paid for this, when, when Cain became a fugitive and a vagabond, he paid for this when he came back as Esau. And that's exactly why, if you look into these Edomites, okay, the AKA, the Caucasian, if you look into their true history, they don't really have a true heritage, okay, today. Like, they don't have a legitimate or, or like a truthful, historically legitimate heritage that they can really trace back. The only heritage that they can really claim, okay, has been theirs, is going back to the Caucasus Mountains, okay? The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, being the cavemen, that's truly the only true history that they can say was rightfully, legitimately theirs, okay? And, and they always they always claim to be, you know what I'm saying, the the original Europeans and all this type of crap. They always claim to be the original people or, or whatever, which, which they're not, okay? They're not at all. As a matter of fact, what these Edomites pretty much did is what they, they went around. If you look into history, they went around the world, conquered different type of civilizations, and once they conquer these different civilizations, they just claim that people's nationality and this people's heritage that they conquered. OK, and this all starts back to when you go all the way back to Alexander the Great. OK, they call him Alexander the Greek. All right. And this is when these um, Caucasians or these Edomites actually start to rise. OK, in power. OK, that's when we first started to see Edomite supremacy was when these Edomites they actually got the power from on high, okay? Because it's prophecy that they would pretty much conquer the whole known world, okay? And they did do that with Alexander. And they also conquered the Pacific Islanders, okay? They conquered the, the people of Japheth, which would be the original Europeans, okay? Those were the original people of Europe with the Pacific Islanders today, okay? Those are the pe true people of Japheth, Jeff, uh, Japheth man. If you read a book the uh, book about Noah's sons, Shem, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, well, the people of Japheth, those would be the Pacific Islanders, okay? But these but after these Edomites pretty much took these people out, all they did was claim to be the people of Japheth. They claimed the nationality of the Europeans. They kept the land. They removed all evidence that there was ever another people inhabiting that land before they got there. See, that's how these Edomites, that's how they do. Okay, that's how they get down. They they are fugitives, they're vagabonds. They don't truly belong anywhere. Yeah. And I want to actually read this right quick in the book of, it's called The 13th Tribe, right? All right, so I switched the camera right quick to show this book, okay? This is a book called uh, The 13th Tribe by Arthur Krausler. And um, I've showed this book before, but really, uh, this book goes into how, um, and I'm going to read this right quick. It says, the startling new discovery about the true ancestry of the Jewish people it will cause a stir. So this is an actual man of a Jewish, so-called Jewish descent, which those people in Israel today call themselves Israelis. All right, those are not the true people of Israel. Okay, those are not the true Jews that you read about in the Bible. In this book, uh, this book pretty much exposes that. Okay, and this was an actual man who called, was an actual so-called Jew. And he wrote a book on this, right? And uh, I want to read this first. Okay, this one right here. Because I'm proving on how these people are fugitive and vagabonds. They don't truly belong anywhere, but they just went around the world and uh, conquered other people. And they claim to be the other people. But this man exposed, but this is a book exposing, okay, one of the many, okay, hoaxes. Okay, this is going to be the page 17 of 13 Tribe. The large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of Eastern European, okay, and thus, perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors are not from the Jordan, but from the Volga, not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. One believed to the uh, to be the cradle of the Aryan race, that and that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun, Yerger, Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The story of the Khazar Empire as it slowly emerges from the past 
begins to look like the most cruel hoax which has history has ever perpetuated right so this right here is showing you that these people who claim to be those jews in europe okay in the east well they're really not of israel descent but they're really from the khazars they come from khazar okay uh, uh descent okay they're they're closely related to people who come from the caucasus okay the caucasus mountains of georgia russia the cave dwellers the aryan race right blonde hair blue eyes okay and it says that th this is the 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 most cruel hoax which has ever been perpetuated on history and con that is correct man because these people are not the true jews at all they're just um they're converts okay they went into the land and uh, they, they pretty much just claim that thing, man. And this is uh, one, one thing right here to show you, okay, who these people are. This is their, it says their land is cold and wet. Accordingly, their complexions are white, their eyes blue, their hair, are, their hair flowing and predominantly reddish. Their bodies large, their nature is cold, their general aspect is wild. And this was an Arab, Arab who was actually uh, documenting and recording these people and this is what he gave his description upon these Khazars, or so-called Jews, which are Edomites. Okay, that's the point. These are Edomites, man. And it said that they're white, really meaning that their skin is pale, okay, red. And this is a description of, of uh, just a, sh a great description of Esau. If you read the book of Genesis 25, this is a, this is the, the exact definition. This is the exact um description that the the bible gives of the edomites and this is exposing them man this is showing that these are these are the people of esau now this is the point i wanted right because we read how cain would become a fugitive and a vagabond well let's see what these edomites okay the history of these edomites right the origin of the name khazar and the modern derivations to which it gave rise has also been the subject of much ingenuous speculation most likely, the word is derived from the Turkish root gaze, to wander, and simply means nomad. Okay? That's the point, man. This is, uh, like I said, this was a, a description of what these K, uh, these Arabs are writing about them. And the word Khazar, it, it comes from a Turkish word meaning root, it means gaze, to wander, or simply meaning a nomad. So, meaning that these people... They would wander from place to place without a home. You see? And that's what these Edomites were actually known for in the ancient times. Before they became European. No, you know what? No, I'm not going to say Europeans because that happened way back in Alexander. But before they came to Jews, they were always known as nomads, man. They, they truly didn't have a, a land except for the, the caves. The Chinese. This is, hey man, the Chinese right here. The Chinese, it says in the first century, the Chinese drove these Hun neighbors westward okay this disagreeable hun neighbors westward and it shows you how the all these people man the chinese the arabs okay different of these different uh ethnicities or nations they didn't like to deal with esau because esau whenever he would try to come do deal with any of these people esau was a backstabber and these nations knew that the chinese didn't want to deal with them the arabs they didn't want to deal with them because they knew that these people would do nothing but backstab them and then go and probably take their land and try to take their heritage. So the Edomites were like castaways, man. They was like, they was, they was fugitive, fugitives and vagabonds in the earth. And this is actually a book proving that. You see, so these are not the real Jews. These are fake Jews who just claim the nationality. They're not the real Europeans because Alexander, he went up there and, um, and, and pretty much conquered them and took that. They're not the real Americans, all right, at all. The, the, the real Americans are the native um, Indians, okay? The Native Americans. But what did they do? They came up in there, okay, conquered them, overthrew them, raped, robbed, and murdered them, and just claimed the land to be their own. So you're going to find out that these people truly have no place in the earth where they actually dwell. And everything that they claim to be is stolen and is all lies, you see? So pretty much we're going to read this again. All right, this is Genesis 4 and 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in earth. So when was this uh, curse of Cain fulfilled? It was fulfilled through the e Esau, the Edomites. Okay, because their history, 
it's nothing but uh uh it, it's nothing to be honest but just um them taking other people's heritages and they they have no true dwelling place in the earth except for really the caucus mountains uh, everything else has been distorted and stolen and lied about it's not legitimate or truthfully truthful historically you know and and that's a prophecy in the book of revelations all right the sixth chapter in the fourth verse whenever john was talking about when he saw the horse the uh the horse the red horse and the power was given to that horse to take peace from the earth and in that and that man also who was on the horse had a great sword that was actually a a scripture talking about esau the red people okay they went around the earth to take peace from it all right and they just they pretty much that now the earth is in lies and it's just in in uh chaos right they continue to go to war alexander conquered the whole known world all right that's when these Edomites truly came abroad. But the fact is, they're actually fugitive and vagabonds, man. All right, that's that's truly the point. And dealing with this one, when it says, I'll the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Now, this was also the way of these Edomites was fulfilled. Okay? This was fulfilled also the way of these Edomites. And that's why exactly today, whenever Edo Esau, you know, whenever he grows his crops and his farms, he has to genetically modify his fruits his plants when it comes to his farms you know they also even have to grow and make certain vegetables like in their labs artificially and and this is all because the earth will not yield her true strength to the edomites because they are cursed so they gotta go and they gotta use alternative options man they gotta produce their crops you know with, with uh genetically modified uh gen they gotta genetically modified our crops man and everything you eat to this day okay here in captivity man it's either fake or it's either gmo'd okay so that's that's the point man all right it's not natural whatsoever everything that these people do is unnatural you see and they have to take this route because they know the earth is not actually helping them out okay the the, the ground right now is all unfertile the ground right now is dry okay is not in this truest state like in the garden so they got to take all these different unnatural routes to try to grow their crops and yield their fruits okay because anything we eat or anything that you you know you see at the stores is not natural whatsoever okay the fact that you can eat seedless watermelon you know most grapes that you eat today they don't even have seeds okay and I bet you, you probably, many people don't even know that real bananas, man. Real bananas should have seeds. Matter of fact, let me show that right quick. Let me, let me look that up right quick, right? Okay, a real banana. Uh, banana. Banana with seeds. Let me see. Cause a real banana should actually have seeds. If you actually go and, um, like, look into it, you see? Um... I want to get this picture right here. So look at that. See, that's actually a, a a a real banana. They have seeds within them. You see, look at that. Real banana should have that, man. Okay. But today you probably eat your banana like that. Okay. This this right here. That's GMO, man. That that's fake. Okay. That's why they come out like perfect. They look perfect. They you know. You know they they pretty much they don't have they don't have any true nutrients like within them okay the, the the real nutrients that that grow within these fruits for your body okay they're, they're not really in them anymore at all okay it, as a matter of fact man if you if you go back to the garden okay or really to be honest just before this devil okay started to destroy the earth and, and you know started to strip all the nutrients you know and start to do all this fake crap well all all fruits had seeds in it all right and going back to the garden, I bet you, all you had to do, man, was eat the fruit, then throw the seed on the ground. And then in no time, you're going to have another fruit tree probably growing. That's why you have seeds, because it's to reproduce. Esau is non-reproductive. He does, He's not like to do anything that reproduces. He likes to destroy. You understand? But the Heavenly Father is all about reproduction. The laws are about reproduction. But these people don't follow the law, man. So this is what you get. You get fake things, okay? And these, these people over here destroying the earth and forcing it to try to bring forth some fake some fake stuff. You see? 
you can even even look in Israel back in the ancient days, right? Israel was a very lush, it was a green, it was a fruitful place, man. Beautiful mountains, oak trees, palm trees, cedars, cedars in Lebanon. Okay, you had all kind of fruit trees. The land, okay, when the Israelites were there, it was beautiful. It blossomed, you know, because we were actually blessed and we were supposed to be in the land. And the earth actually yielded forth her fruit. Okay? But now if you actually look at the land over there in Israel, you know, with those fake people up in there, the fake Jews, which also, like I already read, in the 13th tribe, they are Edomites. Well, that land is now a desert, man. Look at that place. It's a wasteland. It looks like a, a it really looks like a rocky wilderness, man. And that's because these people are cursed. And the earth literally hates them. The the sun hates them. Okay, the animals hate them. Nature hates these people. And they know this. Okay, and that's why they, they got to force the earth to genetically bring forth what they need it to bring forth. Okay, because it will not forth, it will not yield anything to them um, like they would like to. Okay, so that's why they got to force the food. They got to destroy. They got to destroy the earth. They got to strip all the nutrients they can from it. You see, they, they pretty much, uh, they, they go around and, uh, you know, put chemtrails up in the air, man. They poison the air. They they poison your water. They poison the sea. They dump all those biological hazards into the ocean, and then they kill the fish. They kill the, the animals. Everything is polluted. They they deforest it. The, uh, they, they pretty much cut down the trees. They're big into deforestation. So that they can set up their big concrete jungle cities. Okay? That's what they go for, man. And then these big factories just polluting the air. These cars. I mean, like everything here is just unnatural. Okay? And all these animals are, are pretty... You have many animals that are just extinct now, man. Alright? Real food doesn't even exist. Okay? The people here are oppressed. Okay? And that's how these Edomites have to, have to get down. Because they are the cursed, okay? And it all goes back to the curse of Cain. And it follows these Edomites to this day. And, and they know it, man. Okay, going back to the, 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 the book of Genesis 4. Okay, we're going to read it again, okay? It says, And now thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened our mouth to receive thy brother's blood. When I till this the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from the face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. You know? And that again, man, that, that right there goes into how these people, um, that's why they don't lose any wars, man. Okay, that's why these Edomites, they they uh, they seem like they're invincible. is because the Lord actually uh, set a mark upon him to, to the point to where if any man killed Cain, you know, vengeance was going to be taken on those same people. That's why these people, no one can take down the Americans. No one can take down these Edomites from ruling, you see. And, and this is all links up with the same man Esau. Now, Cain, he didn't deal with all this in his life, but he came back as the Edomites, and now he's dealing with it, okay? And he's the devil of the earth, and that goes straight back to his same spirit in the garden when he deceived Neve. you see? That's the point, man. I want to get this last precept, and I'll close it out, okay? In the book of Revelations, okay, Revelations chapter 11, verses 18, it says, And the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, and small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Yep, so the Lord, okay, he's going he's gonna to put the earth back in order, but he first and foremost has to get rid of these people who destroy the earth, okay? The people who are the devils of the earth. Okay, distorted the history, distort, lied about the chosen people, changed the true identity of the Israelites. Okay, pushed out on the earth. Okay, their media, their their enchantments, their Hollywood. Okay, their wickedness, their way of life, their philosophies, their ideologies. All these things have turned the earth upside down, and the nations are angry 
because because the whole earth is out of whack and these people are straight devils. All right, but the Lord is going to restore the earth back to order when the devils of the earth get out of power. See, so I'm going to end it off on that, man. Okay, Cain is Esau in the regeneration.